Hi guys, I'm Andre Bordenhorst, Fujifilm X photographer and brand ambassador. I specialize in conceptual photography. Thanks to ODP, we will be discussing a couple of light setups of some images I've shot. And today we will be discussing this image. Um, it's an image of Silver Black. He's an incredible rap artist, also a very good friend of mine. The image was shot at a conceptual photography workshop I hosted back in April. Um, the set was designed by my business partner, Maritza Bartman. She's an incredible art director. Um, yeah, I think before we get into the lighting, I just want to chat about a couple of um, tech things. Um, the image was shot on a Fujifilm GFX 50S which is a medium format camera. I've been shooting with the GFX for about a year and a half now and it's a truly incredible, incredible machine. Um, I'm just gonna zoom into Silver Black's hand over here so you can guys can just see the, the, the amount of detail in this image. Um, also being medium format, you know, the reasons for shooting medium format is the incredible dynamic range that you get. Um, this camera in particular handles colors so well. Um, yeah, enough about the camera. <laughs> um, let's chat about the flashes. I used, a, it's an 8 light setup. I used 6 AD600s, Godox AD600s and two speed lights. And then for the modifiers, I used two medium reflectors, uh, one 30 degree grid, two strip banks with grids, and a four foot octa. All right, cool. Just want to quickly show you guys the light diagram. This is obviously a top angle of what's going on in the set. Here's uh, silver black, our subject, camera angle. And you will see all our flash heads over here, flash heads and modifiers. Um, these red bricks are just illustrating the, the wall behind them. The little gap is then our window right behind silver black. All right, you, you will also see that we use quite a lot of color gels on this image. We had a pink gel at the back here, a blue and a yellow gel on this side. Right, just back to the image again. Um, before we start, I just wanted to let you guys know the this fluorescent tube that you see over here is the the only reason for this. This is not lighting the set or our subject at all. Um, it's only there for visual effect. Um, the, the the image was shot at ISO 250 f 7.1 at 1 125th of a second. And the reason for me shooting ISO 250 was also just to get this light to pop a little bit. So I was riding my shutter um, just to get, it's obviously an ambient light. So just to get the right amount of light coming through this tube. So in other words, if there's no flashes firing in this image at all, you will see a pitch dark frame with only this light strip running through. All right, cool. So let's get to the first light that we added in. And that was the, the pink light in the room behind Silver Black. So just want to show you guys how we got that look. Um, I just added in a white reflector at the back here because there was a white wall. So what we did is we gelled a light pink. We added a reflector on the side here. So this guy, this, this light was just firing into our reflector, bouncing into it and spreading the light all over this area. Um, back to the image just so you guys can see and that's what you see through the window that pink and how you achieve the, the correct color of pink or whichever color gel you use is by riding your power um, on the actual flash head so if you want a deep rich pink you will power down on your flash and vice versa all right, cool. The next two lights we added in was the two strip banks. You'll see at the back of Darrow. Just go back here. You'll see 
a, a strip hitting him on the side here and on the other side just over his ear on this side over the shoulder all right so back to the diagram our strip bank on the right over here was gelled blue and the guy we left, used on the left was just uh, ungelled so just normal daylight balanced um, the reason for me gelling the, the, the one strip blue was just to imitate you can see our TV monitor on this side so it was just to imitate or show that the TV light is lighting Daryl on this side um, that's why it's gelled blue you can see it catching him catching the side of his face there over the shoulder also on the hand over here um, all right, and then our strip on the other side, you can see catching him over the ear, again over the shoulder. You can see on this side, I'm obviously only talking about the strip, so that's not catching Daryl's face really, you know. Um, only obviously on this side you can see the blue, but you will see, we're still getting to the key light, but Daryl is actually lit with a yellow gel. So this, this yellow tone that you see sneaking into his body here, that's got nothing to do with the, with the rim lights or those two strip boxes. All right, um, let's carry on. All right, the, the, the next flash that was added in was our key light. Uh, it's a yellow gel. So what I did is we just added a flag between our strip and our light over here just to flag the light from spilling onto my background. I only wanted that light to hit Daryl's the side, one side of Daryl's face as well as the the beer glass standing on, on the table. Just want to show you guys there. There you can see the light hitting that that draft glass and all over the one side of Daryl's body. So straight down all that. You can see the yellow gel onto his arm there, in his face. Yeah, it also, I used that light, um, that particular light was, was used with a medium reflector and a 30 degree grid. Um, again, it was just to control my lighting. I love using a lot of uh, grid spots or and grids for my soft boxes. And it's the reason for that is just purely uh, keeping light away from spilling onto parts of the image that I don't want it to spill on or keeping it away from white ceilings all those little things okay um, you will also see that in quite a lot of my images I love combining harsh and soft light and it's uh, the reason for that is just creating depth I uh, in this case I use the hard harsh key light on Daryl that's why he's got this dramatic badass effect on him. Um, and then the rest of the set will be filled with a way softer light. Okay, the next light we added in was the four foot octa standing on this side. So I had a look at my frame and <clears throat> at this stage it was very dramatic. Um, there was still obviously using these these uh, strip banks with the grids in the light was very controlled it was only on on daryl you know and not really filling into into a, a set you know so we added in the forefoot just on the left hand side here just to spread into into our set as well um it called daryl and obviously the back of the set over here um but it was a very subtle light i think that it was shot at about two stops under camera exposure um, maybe even three uh, you will see it catching the front of the table over here the back back of Daryl into the set okay moving on to our our next light I had a look um, on the actual diagram this light doesn't make a lot of sense because that blue gel is actually inside the oven so what happened is I had a look at the frame and this part of the image just looked so dead um, that window window of the oven was pitch black so we decided to gel a, a speed light uh, blue and pop it inside the oven there 
you will also see there's quite a lot of haze in this image on this side as well as coming out of the oven here. So what we did is we hazed the set and we actually got quite a bit of smoke inside the oven, closed the door and just before we took the, took the shot we opened the door so the smoke can escape. You'll see it coming up all around in this area. And that's how we achieved that look. Right. Into the next next light that was added in um, is this little speed light you'll see behind the camera. So again, I love building my light setups around chimping the camera. I don't really use light meters because I um, I kind of feel like a light meter will get, give you the correct exposure, but that might not be what you're trying to achieve. So with my images, I look at monitors and I change my lighting, the power settings, the angle as I see fit and kind of just paint with light. So I had a look at the image and the portrait I had on the wall here um, was just way too dark and I wanted that to stand out so that's why we added in the speed light behind the camera um, I took a speed light zoomed it to 200 mil and then I used two reflectors pretty much as as walls two walls with a little gap in between them I then fired this light through that little gap it was running straight through the set then catching our portrait that was hanging on that wall. So it created this whole strip light effect. Um, and I really liked the way that turned out. Um, it almost, it creates quite a bit of depth in your shot as well. Um, and it also just creates this feeling of there's maybe a door that's open and light sneaking onto that wall on that side. It it really adds with working with sets and just um, you know making it as real as possible, so it doesn't look fake. Um, the whole idea, obviously, with building sets and all those things, is you you creating your own world and you've got to make it look as realistic as possible. All right. Um, just want to look at the diagram again. Yeah, that's pretty much how the lighting on this image was done. If we go back to the shot here, two little things that I did in post was we enhanced the the color on the TV monitor over here. Uh, we made it blue so it matches with the blue gel that's hitting his face over there again. And then this little corner of the frame was sticking out a little bit too much. It was pretty much this white uh, on that dial was over the screen and it was just a bit too hectic for me. It was drawing your eyes attention too much and away from silver black. So we ended up just adding the green in post. And that is pretty much how this image was created. Um, if you guys want to check out more of my work, please visit my website. It's andrebardnost.com. You'll also find me on Instagram, uh, andrebardnost. And then just a shout out to ODP. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you guys for listening. I hope I didn't bore you. Cool. Have a great day.